Hello and welcome to another Tim Allen 1337 Black Desert Online Guide, where today we are going to be going over some of the most frequently asked questions that I've received in the first couple days of Black Desert Online launch on Xbox. I just finished a lengthy stream that was promoted by the developer Pearl Abyss to help people who are new to Black Desert Online get along with not only the intricacies of the game, but also how to navigate the complex menus within it, uh, which can take some time getting used to. I'm going to use this video to try to condense as much as I can into a few categories so new players can get a good feel for the game and hopefully answer some questions that you may not even know that you had. I'll put some timestamps in the description below so you can skip to specific needs if you'd like. Okay, so first up, is this game worth it was easily one of the most popular questions in my Twitch chat. A broad question normally gets you a broad answer, but I'll do the best I can to drill down on this. Simply put, absolutely. For $10, you have access to all the classes, all the skills, life skills, events, past, present, future content. This game's never put any content behind a paywall. So no matter what, buying one of the most complex, comprehensive, and competitive PvP MMOs ever made for only $10 USD is absolutely worth it. So naturally, this begs the question, should I just get the $10 version of the game or should I invest in one of the packages? So let's take a few minutes to dig into what you actually get in some of these packages so you know if it's a good use of your own money. Before we jump into the packages, know that there isn't a mandatory monthly fee for this game outside of what you pay for Xbox Live. But do keep in mind the buffs you get from the value pack are substantial. It drastically reduces attacks on the marketplace when selling items. But you can buy this with Endgame Silver now, so it's actually fairly easy to play this game without spending money monthly if you play it enough. The $29.99 package gives you some necessary early pearl items and essentially doesn't charge you for the game as its discount. This is an excellent choice for people who are interested in giving the game a real try, but skeptical on how long they're actually going to play it. The $49.99 version is my least favorite. It does give you $70 worth of pearl items, plus a mount, but the game gives you a starting mount anyway, and it's about the same speed as this tier 3 horse. I don't see a huge value in this package, as the pearl horse armor costs $20 and definitely isn't worth it, which to me eats up all the savings or value of this package. As you'd expect, the $100 version is the best value as it gives you over $160 worth of pearl items, plus a tier 5 horse, which isn't a bad mount to start with. Again, it does come with the pearl shop horse armor, but you're still going to net a bunch of savings by going with this package, even though some of it is purely cosmetic. Obviously, you're going to want to be really sure about this before you spend $100 before even playing the game. Alright, great. So now everybody knows what they need to spend on the game to play the game. Let's get to the actual game. What classes are in the game? When will more come out? Why aren't Awakenings out? Sork, Ranger, Berserker, Warrior, Witch, and Wizard are all in the game. We'll be getting four more classes in the upcoming months, and Awakenings did not ship with the game to give new players a chance to learn some of the core mechanics of the game and not really overload them. Plus, the nostalgia is pretty fun for those of us who played pre-Awakening. I expect we'll get Awakenings for bomb skills, absolute skills within a few months. If you don't know what any of that is, don't worry, it's all cool stuff. All right, Tim, so which of these classes are good for new players? I suggest Witcher Wizard. They're really easy to get a handle on and they do massive damage. But if mages, casters aren't your type of playstyle, I suggest you give Warrior a try. Even though their damage is a little underwhelming in the start of the game, as the game develops and we get new patches, it really starts to come through. All six classes out right now are great, but I'd argue that Sork and Berserker will become well, some of the harder classes to master on Xbox, so just keep that in mind when you're picking a class. Another super common question that I've been getting is, what gear is best for my class? Simply, I would invest in Heave Armor, a Uria or Laverta weapon, and an offhand that offers pure AP. There are some min-max combinations for each class, but Heave has great defensive stats and it's worth investing in. Before that, you can grind Catfish Man Camp, Trents, Manchas, Rudum Outstation for some unenhanceable blue gear that will be a great start for farming and likely a huge upgrade in the beginning of the game. You'll go to all those grind spots if you follow the main quest. Just make sure you stay there until you get each armor piece and accessory that drops there from each area. Enhancing is obviously a very important part of this game, but I'm not going to touch on it with this guide. I don't want to make it too long, and quite frankly, I just don't have the materials to do it yet. So stay tuned in the next couple of days. I'm definitely going to be dropping a plus 15 enhancement strategy video soon. All right, so it's time to tackle one of the most complex and unique parts of Black Desert Online, which is the node system. 
I'm going to explain what a node is and what you can do with this system. But if you're new to Black Desert Online, this is going to seem really complicated at first, but I promise you'll get the hang of it. Just stick to it. Simply put, a node is just an area on the map. Activating a node will allow you to do two things. First, it'll give you a buff to grinding mobs in that area, depending on how much energy you invest into that node. Secondly, it'll allow you to send a worker from a city, Velia, Olvia, Trent, Calpheon, etc., to automatically go to that node and collect resources. If this node has that, not all nodes have resources that can be collected. Please keep in mind, you should only invest energy in nodes where you will actually be actively grinding for rare drops, not sending workers to nodes. Obtaining workers and activating nodes are resources that are controlled by the contribution system, which is a form of experience you obtain from doing most quests and dailies. I strongly recommend you do the main quest line as soon as possible because it gives a ton of contribution experience. Be sure to look for the little gold medal icon when you accept a quest to know which quests are giving you contribution experience, but keep in mind almost every single quest in this game gives you at least some. Now's the time to dig into hiring a worker. First, you're going to want to open the world map. Select the city you'd like to hire a worker in, for now we'll use Velia as an example. Press A on the Velia icon, then select Manage Crafting in the upper right. Use the above filters and goals to find what you're looking for. Right now we're just focusing on finding lodging, which is what you need to expand how many workers you can hire in a city. As you see here, I have Velia Room 1 and Velia Room 2 already purchased. You must purchase rooms in order, but as you go deeper into the chain, the rooms will cost more CP, but you'll also be able to upgrade them for a small amount of silver to offer higher quality production, or in our case, more worker slots per room. I've purchased the third room in the chain to show you the process. After the timer is done, we'll be able to hire a new worker. Please keep in mind every town automatically has one worker slot already without having to purchase a room. Now that we have the lodging for the worker, we need to go physically hire the worker. In order to do that, we need to visit the local worker manager. From your world map, press down on the D-pad to bring up the find NPC menu. Press the right bumper until you get to the worker icon, then press the right trigger for the waypoint to show up. This will take you to your closest worker manager, so make sure you're in the right city when you pull this up. All right, now that we've arrived at the NPC that'll allow us to hire a worker, there's a few things you need to know. When you're hiring a worker, it's gonna be of a random race and skill level. It's all RNG and you can gamble it for five energy per roll. Know that goblins work quickly, but won't repeat work for very long before needing to be fed. Giants work slowly, but for a very long time. And humans are kind of the happy medium. I prefer humans for most situations. Workers can be fed or recharged using beer and a couple other items that are craftable and purchasable in the central marketplace. Now we have our workers and we're ready to connect our node. But I gotta tell you guys something first. As of the recording of this video, you can't tell the item that you're collecting from a node, especially if it's not hooked up. So please go bookmark somethinglovely.net slash BDO. There's a ton of information on this map and it'll be a huge help through your BDO journey. All right, so let's get back into this. I wanna hook up the node Balanos Forest. I have two ways of doing this. If I don't have a value pack active or I wanna conserve energy, I have to pull up the map, hover over the node, press X, and then walk over to the node manager, speak to the node manager, bring up node management, and then use my contribution to hook up the node. You also wanna make sure that you use the contribution to hook up the harvesting nodes as well, not just the node itself. Alternatively, if I do have a value pack active and extra energy to burn, which I have both of those, I can be anywhere on the map, open up my map, and get the same menus and the same options as if I was there for only 10 energy. I want you guys to notice that the only way for me to hook up this node is by having the previous node hooked up as well, which in this case is Bartali Farm, since there's no way for me to directly connect Balanos Forest to Velia. This is an extremely important part of managing a CP network in your worker empire. You always got to keep this in mind. When you need a certain material from a certain node, you have to understand that you have to invest in all the previous nodes that lead up to the major city as well. We're almost done, guys. I promise. All we have to do now is actually send the worker to the node. Then we can set it and forget it. Go back to your nodes menu real quick. 
Select Manage Work in the upper left-hand corner. Make sure you select the correct resource by hitting the left or right bumper. Then select the worker you want by pressing A. Then press Y to bring up the repeat settings, which means how many times the worker will do the task. Select All so they'll do it until they run out of stamina. And then you hit X to start the work and you are finally done. It's important to note that you don't have to go through this every time you want to get some work done on a node. This is just what you have to go through to get your empire set up at the start. When your worker runs out of stamina in a few hours, you'll need to feed it. Also keep in mind that your worker will finish their current task while you are offline, but will not continue their work until you relog. This is a major argument for staying online 24-7. Remember, select your worker's recovery food from your inventory to feed your workers. From this menu, you can reset them all, feed them all very quickly. So that's a good guide on how to hook up a node, how to hire a worker, how to send that worker, maintain it, all that kind of stuff. But if you're confused on what nodes you should pick first, or how to get more CP after you've done some main quests, check out these videos that I made previously, and they'll help you out. The last thing I want to touch on in this guide is the UI. It is complex, but it's also a complex game, so they deserve each other, but it takes a little time to kind of get to know it. So the first thing you really want to do is take a look at that ring menu. The things that they've already put on your ring menu in the bottom when you start the tutorial, get to know those, get to love those, but also customize your ring menus as well. Get into that menu, move things around so you can react to situations as fast as possible. All right, so we finally reached the big question of the entire video. How the hell do I zoom out? I've got the answer for you. Put your weapons away, hold the right thumbstick down for about two seconds, and then you can move it forward and backward to zoom in and out. You're welcome. Ever notice how the screen shakes when you cast skills? makes everything look super powerful, but for some of us, it gets a little old, especially in those big or long fights. Head over to settings, then click on general settings, and you'll see at the very top there, overall camera effect. That's where you'll be able to turn the screen shake off or just turn it down a bit, whatever you're feeling. The last UI tip I have is looking at storage while not being at a storage master, which actually took me some time to figure out. Go to your world map, Choose the city storage that you'd like to take a look at. Go to enter. Then notice at the upper right hand corner, there's a menu option if you select Y. That will bring up options for transport, warehouse, stable, and house purchasing. That'll do it for this guide. And we definitely covered a lot of information here. I certainly hope it helped. And I appreciate the support you all give me on Twitch while I'm live and by watching my videos here on YouTube. I'm very responsive to questions on both, so please subscribe and drop any comments below and I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. My next two videos will be focused around enhancing and farming, so keep a lookout for those and I'll be dropping them very shortly. Please feel free to come say hello while I'm live on Twitch, Monday through Wednesday, 8 p.m. till 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then Saturday in the afternoon until about 2 a.m. as well. Have a great day and I'll catch you all next time.